And with me is Robin McKnight, and welcome to our little show. Thanks, Phil. Robin. Yeah. And Robin is a legend in the world of model making. We first met Robin down in Taupo, and you might remember a, a show or two ago, we talked about that great big crane that was parked uh, on the main trunk line near Taramanui. And uh, it was Robin's photograph of the crane he was building uh, at the time, and he's actually finished it now, so we'll be able to have a look at that shortly. But what's captured my um, attention is this TC12, this Euclid CC, CT, <coughs> TC12. TC12, yeah. Yes, and um, it's just like it's the real thing, really. And Robin, perhaps just tell me a little bit of what inspired you to do this. Um. Basically, um, I saw it when I was a kid, when I was really young, about 12 or 13, and it was on the Fariratas when my parents were doing a trip to Wellington. And um, they stopped for a cup of tea, and um, I got out and I couldn't believe my eyes, and this machine was running up and down, and it was screaming its head off, and the sound of the Detroits, it's just unbelievable. And um, I, I just got my camera, I'd only had a, a brownie, one of those off-box cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I got in and took quite a few snapshots of it. And um, yeah, and even when they were parked up on the way back from Wellington, I got a few shots too. But I knew one day I'd probably have to make one. Okay, so you've been modelling for a long time? Um, yeah, most of my life, yeah. Really? From 10 or 12, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. always there, you know, just wanting to build things. Good on you. Yeah. And so you, what happens to the models? I mean, once you've done it, does it just get put in the cupboard? You think, God, I've done that. Firstly, What's next? you fall in love with them. Oh, okay. See, and then because a lot of people want to buy them, but you you just can't sell them. You know, there's. <laughs> but you, so if somebody sort of had one of these, well, they're like an operator, yeah. like even Feast and McJoro, it's got written yeah. on the side there. So if one of that family come to you and said, "Listen, can you do this again?" and we'll just money's no um, object, would you? Um, would you do it well, again? to do this one here, um, it was the tracks. If I couldn't do the tracks, I couldn't have done the dozer. But I managed to silicon cast the tracks. And um, but now I'm on a source of tracks where I can um, I could probably make other dozers now. Oh, okay. So I don't. There's not not the time involved. Tell me about the tracks. I mean, they they uh, they've got to be put on the right way. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> when you sent the photographs up, um, my friend who had one of these said, yeah. has he put the tracks on the right way? And he, he looked yeah. at it, very, oh he has, you know. Well, for a start, I, I did, when I did the, um, the, the, the track frames and everything, I, I started on the dozer, then um, what happened was, um, I had a good look at it, and yeah, the tracks were on back to front, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, that was amazing, because I've got to uh, drop the master pin, it's got a master pin in it. And um, because they're they're not robust, the tracks, they're only you know um, fiberglass. But um, yeah, you've got to be a bit careful. But I so, turn so them each one of these each one of these um, plates, yeah, is grouses. Pinned, is, grouses is yeah. pinned on individually. Uh, no, no. Um, I actually made a master, and what happens is you make the whole track with the with the chain link in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And these these are just pins. And you drill, like, in the master, they had little holes in them. And, of course, you just get a pin, and you just cut the head off, and then you put each shaft in, in the track. So this whole machine <coughs> is, is from the ground up out of your head? Yeah, yeah. And from yeah, photographs? Just on a photograph, yeah. Good. good. And just, um, just photos, yeah. So every bit of this you've made? Yeah, every single bit, yeah. You've got some photographs here of, uh, of when you started this machine. Maybe we start from the beginning. Which yeah, is... I'll get the... Um, there's ones here of the tracks. Yeah, just let's have a look at that, folks. That's, that's, that's stage one. If you want to build one of these, this is where you start. You've got to, you've got to get the tracks right first. Yes. So just to explain all this, so, so you've got the grouses all laid out there, you've got yeah. the, the rollers, the sprockets, the, and that's the chassis. Yeah, well, these, these are the, like, the tracks. Um, there's about 80 links, 80 grouses in, in one one row, and you've got to um, you've got to build the because these because of the TC12, um, it's got two two engines, so all this oscillates. Yes. So you've got to build that track frame to this to this frame here, the subframe, and then it's pinned. But it's it's that really that part half of it is actually a full model. And then the other half is a full model again, and then the blade and the rippers are another another model. I think again. They call them a C6 or something, the single 
the, yeah, the single one. Yeah, yeah, yeah just the single one. So this one. is this is designed to sort of that's right in yeah, the middle. Yeah. yeah, but just getting that right and getting it all plumbed up is a, is a major operation. Yeah. Wow. But um, you can see um, oh, where are we? And this one here, uh, I got all the frame right, and then um, then I started on the tractors. You can see how they're actually two different two models. See. So it's quite an operation, really. So you made the two models individually and then put them together? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. you have to match them up. Yes. Both sides have to be exactly right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then you have all the controls and Fill everything. Them. Yes, yeah. And wow. then it, it just goes on. And so where do you make them from? What sort of... What sort of? It's some um, galvanised iron. Just as the flat sheet? Just flat sheet iron, and you yeah. you chop them out? Yeah, just Hands. cut it out. I draw a picture first, yes. just um, to about the right scale. Yes. Once you've got the track, you can sort of work out what you're doing, yes. you know, and then um, and then you just start building the model. Yeah. So have a look at this one, folks. There's the the tracks is all done, and you've painted it. The reason you painted it before you've done the yeah. Rest? The reason is I wanted to get the subframe right first. Oh, okay. And without the subframe and the tracks, you couldn't make the model. Oh, God. Yeah, you had to get that first, yes. and then work on from that. So yeah. in this in this actual model here, I just see that the instrument panel it's yeah. split. That's so right. So obviously the yes. instrument panel yes. even that goes yeah. you know up and down. Right? But it has, has the, um, there's one set of gauges, a lot of gauges there for this this engine, yes. and some for this engine. So the guy, in order to, oh, something's happening on that, that side, he's actually got to lean over a bit to look at the, um, the gauges that are over there yeah, from the seat. Um, I think the gauges are sort of, I'm not sure, but I think the gauges could be turned a little bit, just right, so he's got, yeah, he, can, yeah. he can eyeball them easy. Sure. So tell me about the blade. I mean, is that the blade, from, um, is the blade a... Um, off the photograph of the actual one, or have you got um, the blade from somewhere else? Well, it's what I could see on Feast Majora's one um, was basically what you see now. But um, I've had a look on another dozer, uh, other ones that I've seen, and uh, there's extra webbing in the in the in the in the, in the structure. And um, and now the A-frame, it basically that's what it is. So this again, you've made this. And made that. That's another model on its own. I thought it was going to be simple, but it's. It turned out to be a bit of a mission too. So, you could, do you think you could make a, a, a real one, um, given the you know, given the right I, I don't amount know. of steel? And, um, I mean, <laughs> well, now that you've got a model, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose as long as you had the dozer, you could make the frame. Yeah. I think yeah. to make you the blade, to, I suppose. Yeah, yeah right. as long as you've got the metal. But one one of the things that I find really you know mm. authentic that makes this authentic is on the paint side here of this blade. You've got where some, oh, yeah. something would have scraped by, yeah. which is what happens up along the side of the. You know, the, the arms here, you've, yeah. it looks like it's been scraping along some rocks or something, which is yeah. what, what the blade would have looked like you know, yeah. in, in a real version. Well, um, I've been doing a lot of big um, 124th um, scale model planes, and really um, the model planes, um, they've been doing it for years, making them look real. But we don't sort of put it into models like trucks and, and dozers yeah. and stuff. So what it, um, I'm lucky really because I work with galvanised iron, and what you do is you just polish it and then put a clear coat over it and you can put all the scratch marks in and then it's there forever. <laughs> see, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Yeah, but even coming down across the front of the blade here, there's all these little all the cutting edges. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the, where they've all been bolted on, obviously, yeah. they wear out. And they they're just, um, new ones. well, you, you, you just measure it all out accurately and then uh, center pop everything and drill all the holes and then you just um, drill them out and put pinheads in and cut them off and sold them in. This just is a great word. That's just makes it sound <laughs> yeah. like real easy. You, know, it was, it was, well, yeah. you can make one tomorrow, yeah. You just need to do this and you just need that and you just need this and you're away. <laughs> yeah, but unless I did that, um, the critics, you'd get pulled over on it, especially at a model show, because they'll um, they'll pick anything out of it. Sure. You know, but it's pays to get it as accurate as you can. Sure, even the toolbox on the side here. Yeah, got to have the toolbox. And what's under here? Um, I think that's where you get into the radiators and stuff. Oh, okay, right. Because, right, um, right. you know, the Radiate. radiators are in the back on this thing. Yeah. It's got big fans. Back. What does it weigh? Any idea? Um, this one here, without the, um, going by the catalogue I've got, um, without the rippers and the blade, it's about 31 tonne. Oh, right. And what does this actual model weigh? Well, this yeah, one, oh, you mean now. that's the real one I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's but, um, uh, um, I'd say, oh, it's, it's probably as heavy as a 127 battery. Oh, okay. It's quite heavy. Um, it's quite heavy, but um, that's because I work out of steel. Sure. You know, I, everything, everything I do, I work in metal 
and yes. just solder is so good to work with. Sure. Yeah. So you can make the solder look like a part of, of yeah, the Yeah, you machine. can do. Yeah. yeah. Just looking yeah. at your rippers here, the yeah. you know, the uh, the hydraulic. The piston. The piston. The yeah, that's made out of car pumps. aerials and stuff like that. Car aerials. Yeah, just car aerials. <laughs> And um, I use a lot of the inserts that come out of um, windscreen wipers, you know, the stainless steel invert. Yeah, yeah. I use a lot of that sort of stuff too. So you're, um, the, you're the original sort of, you know, number eight wire <laughs> yeah. piece of string, paper, so, yeah. paper clip, yeah. piece of cigarette paper. <laughs> yeah, you see things. a lot of stuff lying around and you think, gee, what can I make out of that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, like all this is all MIG wire. Yes. And if you're using a bit of stainless stuff, you know, it doesn't go rusty and stuff like that. You no. know. And, and the little rubber handles on the, on yeah, the controls there? Yeah, just little bits of plastic, yeah. Just um, tubing. Sure. And, and the cords, well, you know, these would have been, in real life, they're wire ropes, but yeah. what are you using? It's for? just fishing line there. Oh, Miniature fishing lines, it's different yeah. gauges. Yes, yeah. And, um, yeah, so I use fishing line, but the, the pulleys are all uh, washers. And what you do is you um, fire one edge of one washer, and then you do another one, then you glue them together with power glue, and that forms a pulley. But, you know, I've got a, um, a whole series of miniature washers. I get them from the, um, you know, steel and tube, and they give me bulk, lots of them. The, um, the machines at the time, I see they, they pull up with, with, the, with the ropes, but uh, over, uh, uh, there's some reason why they don't use hydraulics. Do you um, know what that is? Um, I th think in, in the later model ones, they could have used hydraulics, but these ones here, um, they centralise themselves because because of the pulley arrangement. One crosses over to the other, and and when they, you know it just counteracts itself. Sure. And I guess having these two machines doing that uh, would, would buckle. It's going all the time. I mean, would buckle um, any any, any rams. hydraulics. Yeah. yeah um, it's hard to say. I've never seen one with hydraulics. No. 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 no but the cables, the cable, the cable area er, era, to me was. It was more fascinating. It's like a tractor and scoop with the onions, yeah, yeah, yeah. The scoops. Yeah. Um, they just look good to see all the wire ropes working and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, you know. It's yeah. just um, unique. Hi everyone. My new book, Talking Trucks, is now available. I'll just read you what Alex McClellan of McClellan Freight in Balclutha had to say in the foreword. This book is the result of many miles travelled, many people met, and many vehicles and machines documented. As people pass on, their stories go with them. So it was great that Bill and Linda could document their stories, not only for their historic value to New Zealand, but also to the families of the people who took the time to pass it on through Bill's shows. I think this book goes some way to honouring that responsibility. Thank you, Alex. I also spoke to Gavin Abbott. And uh, Gavin, as you know, is a, an author himself, written something like six or seven or eight trucking books. And he said... Well, Bill, as you know, I've read a few trucking books in my time, but I have to tell you that this book is up there with the best of them. So there you go. If you'd like to get your copy, the easiest way is to go to our webpage at www.lowgear.co.nz or flick me an email, billhohepper at extra.co.nz or perhaps even just give me a call, 027 277 0717 and we can sort out the details. So there you go. Talking Trucks, now available, and maybe you get your copy for a gift for Father's Day.